Hello my friends, this is Ian, and welcome to episode 14 of my Ink series. Today I'm taking a prompt once again from the list of Inktober prompts that I have yet to complete, and this one today is Clock. And this, by far, is going to end up, by the end of this video, as one of the most detailed one of these pictures I have done so far. I really wasn't totally sure about what I wanted to do with the prompt clock. Uh, I figured I was probably going to do some kind of a clock tower or something, but I didn't really know or couldn't find way, a way that I wanted to do it that was of particular interest to me. So I used it as an excuse to play with some extreme perspectives, and you know how I like to play with perspective. This will allow me the chance to create a really large feeling environment around this clock tower. So you can see the ground down below it. You can also see that stretching off into the, into the distance beyond. You get a really nice a large sky with it as well. So I thought, figured that would be a really interesting thing to do. And of course, I couldn't resist also putting some kind of a demonic figure at the top of the clock face. I mean, what medieval town clock face or clock tower isn't complete with some kind of demon climbing it and this one is no exception. Now I have been painting almost exclusively digitally for the last five or six years so I haven't had the chance to do any perspective work traditionally for a really long time. I've done a lot of like little cartoony things and very basic forms of perspective but nothing quite like this. Certainly not for uh, four or five years or so. So this is kind of ambitious to pull off this kind of thing with a uh, difficult perspective and materials that I'm not familiar with on a scale which I've not done before. So unfortunately there are some areas which didn't quite work quite as well as I would have liked them to, in particular the clock face itself, uh, the one on the right hand side and uh, the tops of those sections of the uh, of the clock tower the bits which actually hold the clocks the left and right side aren't very symmetrical it looks really weird unfortunately i just when i was doing the inking i just did not notice that the pencil lines were wrong and uh, yeah i i should have gone back and spent a bit longer maybe with the sketching or perhaps if I had gone away, left the picture and come back to it, I may have noticed it before I went straight into the uh, into the line work and uh, had a chance to fix it. Unfortunately, I didn't and uh, had to go back and try and fix it later, which obviously the ink being down on the page already didn't really work as well as it should have done. Kind of gives it a double image kind of feel. But it's far less noticeable than the uh, the original clock face, which was just wrong. So as you can see from the video, I did this in two phases. I did the clock tower and I guess the uh, the monastery or the cathedral or whatever it is that it's attached to first in the line work. I then went back to doing the sketching again. This is similar to how I've done in uh, the last couple of pieces, certainly the last one I think where I've completed a section of the picture first and then gone back and done, added more detail into the sketching area. In this one, that's because I really wanted to focus on this little town thing, which is uh, around the, the foot of this tower. I really wanted to give it a feeling of life and like there was actually some people living there, although uh, as you'll see later, I actually set the time on the clock to be something like 20 past one in the morning. So. Uh, there's nobody around on the street, but I still really wanted to give the town a feeling of life, so there are some elements around on the ground which just make it feel like it's lived in, things like uh, different carts and uh, hay bales, and there's... Um, and I go back in towards the end of the piece and add in some clotheslines and all sorts of other things. I think one of my favourite parts of this picture is, if you, sp if you can spot it, there is a tiny little cat just wandering around alone in the streets at night, which I, I really like down there. Just little touches like that, just to give this whole town a little bit of life and feel like it's an actual functioning place and people live there, live their lives in this place. As I move on to the inking later or the washes later, then I start adding in chimneys and smoke and things coming out of them and a lot of fog and kind of merge the clouds of the sky in with the fog of the city to, so that it's, 
it's almost one continuous um, cloud cover which is covering the city until it moves up into the sky and then you've got the moon right right at the very top center where almost the clock tower itself the spire is pointing up directly up at to the moon this effect is one of the things that i love about using perspective like this is that not only are we looking down on the buildings at the foot of the picture but you're having to almost look up at the moon and it really helps to kind of engulf the viewer so they're they're feeling more like they're actually part of the picture I haven't really got that much more to add to the picture at this moment uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you alone with the music and things for a little while and then I will come back when we get into the washes and I'll talk about some of the different things that I'm doing there. Now we're moving on to the washes and this is a very wash heavy piece because the moon is in the background and it's the only source of light a lot of what's in the foreground is going to be silhouetted and very dark. So it was important to bear this in mind when I was doing the washes just so that uh, I didn't get too dark with them and end up losing a lot of those details that I've been adding in as well. I, so I went into this specifically making sure to focus on not allowing those details to disappear into the picture and uh, I think I succeeded. When it came to doing the washers for the background and the city area uh, I applied some of the areas that I wanted to be showing through the clouds first. Things like uh, towers off in the distance or maybe some of the darker rafters and things that are in the roofs of these houses. I wanted them to be kind of showing through the, the fog or the smog or whatever it is that's covering the city, the mist. So adding them in first and allowing them to dry before I apply any of the washes for the mists will kind of give them a feeling like they're just dark shadows recessed back into the mist and that's that's the look I was really going for with them and it, it kind of worked out and then moving forward as the, uh, the uh, buildings actually emerge from the mist it was a handy technique to kind of blend the two areas together where in the far background there isn't any line work and where in the foreground there is uh, having those darker shapes kind of merge between the two really helps solidify that this is in fact the town continuing back into the distance. And now that we're into the final stretch of this picture, it's just a case of going through some of the darker areas and really trying to bring out some of those deeper shadows so that uh, things like the windows and the recesses in the clock tower and some of the areas of the roofs of things in the background really kind of drop back so you can see that they're in shadow and not just the same solid texture as the front of the, uh, the clock tower or whatever it is. 
The final thing that I actually did with this picture is something that I haven't done with any picture in a very long time because it's a technique that I found that I just did not get on with I don't enjoy using and that is using a white gel pen to add highlights and brighter areas to the picture. I often find that the ink in white gel pens is actually kind of translucent or and will allow colour to kind of bleed through after they've dried. In this instance, I really wanted to pick out a few stars up in the sky. I thought that would be really effective. So I did try using the uh, ink gel on the black and it actually worked pretty well. It did lose a little bit of the potency to that white, um, but it did it does still stand out and you can see the stars in the sky in the final piece. So I'm really happy with that. As I say, I'm really happy with how this piece came out. There are one or two areas like the clock face and the tops of those walls that uh, I'm not so happy with. But overall, I think this is one of, or certainly probably the best piece of this series so far. Uh, and I have no idea how I'm going to top it. So wish me luck for the next one. Anyway, I think that this is pretty much the end of the video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have, please be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And as always, guys, take care, and I will see you next time.